Dragon Ball Super just finished up another arc, and so time to talk about it with Vegito and Kazerneko. Whoa, oh, oh, whoa, whoa, oh, 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 oh. I did that for you, Scott. I hope you appreciate it. Welcome back, everybody. It's been a few, a few months. Uh, already January, I think, was when we last recorded uh, one of these Dragon Ball Super uh, retrospective arc curb log type things. I'm joined once again by Mike. Say hello. Hello. And I'm joined uh, for the first time in a while with this combination since uh, I think since like we did that initial oh my god, Super's been announced as a thing to exist uh, one with the three <laughs> of us. Uh, Kaiser Neko, Scott, hi. Hi, buddy. Thank you for making time for this in the midst of seven million things on your plate as per the fucking usual. I'm going to Finland on Tuesday. Oh boy, and you're also going to Japan. At the end of the month. Oh, yes. Jesus. And then you're coming back to California for Anime Expo. Yep, in between the two. Jesus Christ Almighty. Well, thank you seriously for doing this. Uh, I wanted to I wanted to have the three of us particularly. Uh, one, because I hate Moscow. No, that's just kidding. I love <laughs> Moscow if you're hearing this. Uh, no, I, I wanted to talk about this one because um, this, this, this is one that I think all of us have a lot of different like things to say about all of the new characters that are in this. What, what is, I guess, is it is it semi-officially being called the the Shampa arc? Is that more or less what, what Toye and everybody's been referring to it as? Yeah, they called it the Haikaishin Shampa Hin uh, ahead of time and all throughout the entire story arc, which is the God of Destruction Shampa arc. And despite Shampa kind of being on the sidelines the whole time, not really being the focus, uh, he didn't end up being the big bad of the arc, so to speak. Uh, that's still what they called it. So that's what... What will call it. it is wonder you do, do have to wonder what they would call it otherwise because it, was there an official name for the tournament you know just left my head oh so yeah we were updating about uh extreme butoden the other day um and they had the background stage for this tournament arc and they called it something like the tinka uchu budokas whatever it's like the number one in the universe tournament um uh -oh. so you huh. maybe you could call it that i think if you start getting into the universe six versus universe seven god of destruction invitational tournament arc that's <laughs> which is kind of what they did to call it that is the formal name for the tournament that gets to be a bit much so uh it's, yeah it's, it's the shop arc yeah i mean he, he's at the focus and i, and I, I guess i want to start off uh with talking about shampa and vados so it, it's crazy because now it's been basically a year since he was technically revealed uh in the I, if i'm remembering right the very first uh preview image announcing that super was going to be a thing uh had a, a picture of just him and vados just kind of tossed in there uh with all the other characters and their new outfits and everything oh. Gosh, and did it? Yeah, it's it's been dude, oh. it's been okay, as of uh when the 4th of July weekend hits, it'll been it'll, it'll have been a year since Super started airing already. And uh, I think it was around this time cuz by around this time a year ago, uh F had already been out for a while and you know that that was, you know, already kind of starting to simmer down a little bit cuz the screenings had already been around everywhere. And uh, and then you know Super was announced like not long after that and yeah he, I, I believe he was he and Vados were both in that that first uh, preview image so we've known about Champa now uh, for at least a full year. Here you want me to uh, pull up some dates here because there is a certain website that does happen to have all this categorized. Oh yeah I, I, I hear I hear there's one of those that does a pretty good okay of keeping track of the show, Dragon Ball Super <laughs> announcement was April twenty eighth twenty fifteen and then the official website for it launched in May nineteenth twenty fifteen but we didn't quite get any of that uh, imagery there just yet. And I'm clicking through. I'm still talking as I'm clicking through because I'm trying to figure out when exactly. Uh, so uh, it was. It was like in June. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, so it was, it was it a was, year ago. Yes. So so yeah, thank you for sense. further validating my point, Michael. Sure You're so thing. helpful in that way. <laughs> Uh, no, yeah, it, and it was, I mean, I even still remember, like, seeing it, like, on the front page of the site, and I was like, holy shit, what is, what is happening? We're getting a new show. What is my life? Yeah, and, uh, well, I guess we didn't really know what to expect, but it, it was funny because I think even, uh, in that first commercial, too, they had scenes from, like, episodes way, way later where Shampa would have shown up. Well, the thing is, that specific animation was never used. That ended up being animation that they seemed to create specifically for that preview trailer. Uh, as we got the longer length version, we did get some scenes from a couple later episodes, like two and three, maybe even four. But that scene of Shampa and Beerus talking there, that was never in the series proper. In yeah. fact, actually, you're right, and now that I'm thinking about it, it even looked a little bit similar to the differences in that, like how they how they meet up again in the manga adaptation right, of Super. Right. 
uh, which maybe that was the plan. And then by the time they got up to actually like doing those episodes in production, they were like, ah, no, we're changing things a little bit. So fuck it, whatever. I mean, we talked about all the production issues and who knows when they changed what their plans were. And yeah. we saw Toyotaro's manga introduce them way earlier. Maybe that was the original plan. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, I, and it's it's interesting too, because I think in retrospect, it's probably pretty clear that the reason they might have had that bit in there is because, hey, we don't necessarily want everybody to know right away that it's going to be adaptations of the first of the last two movies that we just did we want to show (laughs) something completely new so let's preview this new character and get people interested and well they did so you know mission accomplished guys but uh, but on to on to currents or i guess more semi-current events that is because that was a year ago let's talk about champa himself and his real introduction scott i wanted to i wanted to start with you because he is in fact a cat and you are of course the kaiser of all nekos and i'm not sorry for that pun tell me what do what do you think of of Shampa as a character, I'm I'm curious. It's it's kind of difficult to really pin down Shampa as a character in 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 terms of like how do I put this? We all, we had a character such as Beerus who was very different from the rest of the Dragon Ball universe in terms of antagonist or villain. He was incredibly strong, incredibly powerful, more stronger than anyone else in the show. With the exception of Whis, but he was also very, you know, well, like, he was more casual, more laid back, he, he was not necessarily evil. Then you get Champa, who, how do I put this, he's, he's bratty, he's selfish, <laughs> he's greedy, but it's still hard to define him as flat-out evil. He, 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 and not in the traditional Dragon Ball sense. I mean, he's certainly not a good guy, he's underhanded, he cheats... But he feels more like an all-powerful version of Pilaf to a certain extent. Oh, yeah, that's oh, wow. a great comparison. Huh. Without, you know, without some of the more, you know, juvenile humor that, you know, predicated Pilaf's arc. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is not an insult, by the way. Yeah, Shampa, Shampa was very, like, the moment we saw him, uh, a lot of questions arose. Is he, like, is he the more evil version of Beerus? Um I don't think anyone saw him and thought he was going to be any more serious, though. And let's not forget his original nickname, Diabirus. <laughs> <laughs> right. Which, I, to this day, is still hard for me not to call him. I love the name Shampa. I think the name is fantastic. Shampa and Vados was so creative. Yeah, was, yeah it was like, very clever, kind of unexpected. I think everybody was expecting, like, like vodka or, like, something kind of more generic. Yeah, vodka like definitely that. seemed to be the expected name for that character. Mine was Kila. But, you know, oh. that's because I just love the idea for being named after Tequila. Uh, tequila would be another great name if we're going to get any more. We'll get to world building at some point. Oh, but for I, sure. Yeah, I think yeah. there's so many other regions of the world <laughs> that you can pull alcohol yeah. from. Yeah, I mean, we, we if, if, there, if the remaining gods of destruction for all of the other universes and shit are all uh, alcohol themed, then yeah, I mean, well, I'll expect the rest of those I, at some I, point. I hope they are. Yeah. I, I love, there's one thing, if there's one thing that I adore about Dragon Ball is its naming conventions. And it's, it's such a like basic element of it but yeah for some reason they're just so like like endearing I, yeah it's something about that but yeah Sh- champa champa as a character personally not incredibly overwhelmed by him but there is a, there are, to see a more bratty version of beerus is entertaining in its own right and to see vados just consistently have to like save his ass is also just considering how Whis is so subservient to uh, to Beerus, even though we all know he's stronger. To see Vados be like, ah, you okay, idiot. okay, sweetie, that, that don't worry, I'll take care of it. <laughs> like, it yeah, no, I, I love their dynamic is great, and I love how she kind of insults him to his face, but because he's too stupid to get it, it doesn't like it flies over his head <laughs> at the time. That's great. Where Whis is actually has to be more subtle about it. Vados is just kind of like, oh yeah. You're, uh, you really screwed the dog on that one, didn't you? My favorite was like his art, uh, our interests aren't refined enough to understand what we could have done. So I kept it simple to make him happy. <laughs> like, oh, please. That's amazing. Like, Sh- shut up. <laughs> uh, my, Mike, how about you on, yeah. on, on Trump and Vados? Yeah, Scott, you use the word bratty. I got another B word for you, and that's brash. He's just so noisy and obnoxious about everything. Um, oh, absolutely. Beerus, I, I feel like you can almost compare to Frieza in a few ways, where he normally he's very calm and collected, but he can lose his cool a little bit, whereas Frieza kind of just keeps going. Beerus almost pulls it back around again to being overly dark and serious once he gets pushed past that point of being angry champa just keeps getting louder and louder and louder and more noisy and more noisy and just so high-pitched i love it well his his actor is oh was it mitsuo iwata yes it was yeah 
Yeah, yeah. Kintaro Oe from Golden uh-huh. Boy. The yep. moment I heard that, I was like, are you kidding me? That's great. Yep. So funny. Yeah, so full of range and shit. I, I'm, I'm very, I'm actually very curious uh, on, on the opposite side later, because I mean, I've, obviously we're going to get the, the dub eventually, but I'm very curious how they're going to handle his dub voice, because like when I first heard Shampa in that opening scene where he and Vados are looking for the, the Super Dragon Ball. Yeah, he was dark and gravelly there. I, yeah, and actually he almost, in, in like a little sort of sounded almost like a Jack Japanese version of like the way that Sabbat performs Vegeta with that sort of like yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of rasp him. and I'm like how, how is he gonna sound and then like as as he you know as we really get to know him as as a further character like alongside Beerus and Whis and like their kind of whole that that quartet's dynamic uh, and and he was so rageful and ridiculous and over the top all the time. Like he was so fucking entertaining. And uh, and yeah, that's that's gonna be a performance that that'll be hard to top. I think for sure. Yeah, Mito Iwata has been around for ooh, a long long time. Yeah, yeah. It was great to have him yeah. in there. Uh, I. I thought Shampa was a perfect compliment to Beerus. You can see the sibling relationship between the two of them. Uh, they really are two sides of the same coin, and it's great to have them side by side here. Yeah, without getting, without jumping, you know, putting the carpet before the horse. What happens at the end is really, I loved yeah, that. Yeah, we'll, oh, yeah. Oh, we'll the the kind of full circle of the arc. You mean? Yeah. Oh, uh, we'll, we'll we'll get to that for sure. I want to go over the universe six characters first, but yes. Uh, on the yeah, on the case of them, yeah. Um, it, it it's funny because I, I guess for. An arc that technically doesn't have them as like the spotlight because it it is more about the universe seven versus universe six tournament, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the team characters. Uh, well, Chris, Shampa. hold on a second. So before we start getting into the the characters themselves, Chris, I know you kind of want to go down the line of those new characters. Um, you just started talking about, yeah, it's a tournament arc. My question for you guys. So when we went into this, we kind of had this expectation that it was going to be almost like this introductory world building where we're going to learn about some of these other characters. Uh, we got those early teases from Kaba about what his world is like. And it really seemed to be like, all right, we're going to introduce them and then we're going to go full force into it. We're going to learn more about Universe 6. Maybe Vegeta will visit with them over there. That's not what we got. What we got was pretty much a standard tournament, like all the other tournaments we got in the series, where it's a one-off batch of episodes, and we learn a little bit about the characters, but it's really not about those new characters. It's about learning about our Universe 7 characters. And as we see where we're going now, it's all pulling right back to the stuff that we already know. It seems like Universe 6 and the rest of the universes, they're on the sidelines. So I guess my, or at least for now. So I guess my question for you is, was that the right decision to make to kind of sideline that extra world building and pull it back? Or does that just make sense compared to what we've had with 21st, 22nd and 23rd Budokai in particular? I, okay, you make a very like one of the biggest issues, if I could call it that. One of the one of the sticking points about the entire arc was the fact that yeah, they didn't really go in go in depth into each of the, each one of the characters. We got a little bit about them. Yeah, but like what makes them tick? Who are they? Where are they from? And all right, next, we were essentially given a summary. Yeah, uh, a synopsis of each character, and to that end, yeah, it is very much like the old tournament arcs. And whether or that, whether or not that's good or bad, I personally feel depends on how they move forward. Yeah, I agree. Um, because while I absolutely would have loved to have seen Sadala, well, I would have loved to have seen more about you know the bi- the back end business dealings of um, Frost and God knows poor Botamo just shows up. And then <laughs> <laughs> like all these characters are fascinating, and, and, and you know. One character out of all of them I feel like got the most development, and we'll get into him. You know, as much as I would have loved to have seen more of their backgrounds, we got teased a little something at the end, which if, God God willing, if they move forward with that little drop, then I want that. I, I I would I would be so disappointed if we didn't get a little bit more of the backgrounds and history of, like, Universe 6. Mm-hmm. It, like... You know, some leading up to that tournament, if we just visit Universe 6 and see some of that. Yeah, I mean, I, I have a distinct feeling. Oh, you know what? I should say, uh, by the way, just because we didn't even mention this at the beginning, just, just to, to set the, the time team up a little bit. So we're recording this on Saturday morning, uh, June 11th. So this is before the first episode of oh, yeah. the, the new the new big trunks arc. So we are, in essence, time traveling. I know I always say that, but like Spoilers. it couldn't be more fitting right now. Uh, but we'll, yeah, we'll be uh, we, we, so we haven't seen the first episode of that new arc yet because I wanted to mainly focus on this specific arc be- before we move into that. But I'm, call- that I'm, said, calling, it the bl- I'm calling it the blue haired trunks arc. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the, that's the saga name officially on the Z store. 
Um, yeah, so I, uh, but I, I think that the, the amount of hints and, and little bits and things about that that they dropped, it seems like they are setting up for eventually, and especially with, you know, another, uh, you know, certain arc that we might be getting uh, most likely after the trunk stuff is over. Um, you know, might might very well involve uh, maybe even having to go to Universe 6 for, you know, if, if they have some kind of plot-sensitive reason for doing that. Because um, I, I think in a way, I think that we did get, you know, I, I guess enough, like, necessary for the world-building stuff to see from each of these characters, like the ones that that were that mattered in the long run, uh, you know, for beyond just the, the tournament itself, and using it just as kind of like a point of development for the characters and kind of like like exploring different, um, you know, things with each of them. I think that in and of itself uh, was was totally fine. Um, it, it definitely was was not what I was expecting, which in in that kind of way, I like that it wasn't what I was expecting, and it delivered in terms of it had kind of a cool sort of. Uh, you know, mix of of really what was cool about the the tournament arcs in both uh, Dragon Ball and in Dragon Ball Z in different ways. I, I just a real quick. I also want to just wrap up on the the bit about Champa and Vados is um I yeah they were thoroughly entertaining to me and like I, I was saying the point I was getting to is despite him not technically being the focus of the arc, uh, he was a big highlight just because of like how much he was making me laugh and like his and, Vod- and Vados is. Um, dynamic with uh, with with Beerus and Weiss as well, um, but I guess kind of moving into the next part of it because I want to I want to kind of put uh, Botamo and Magata into kind of the same umbrella. So these two guys, um, you know, Botamo had an episode, Magata had I think like three technically uh, in his fight against Vegeta, and um, I, the, these two characters, although they were like kind of simplistic and whatever, like especially compared to the other three Universe Six characters. Their battles reminded me a lot, especially of the fights from Dragon Ball. Oh, where absolutely. Bas- yeah, where, where basically it was like, okay, Goku and or, you know, any of like the, 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 the Turtle Hermit school students, uh, there's a gimmick to this enemy and you have to figure out the trick to overcoming their gimmick and beat them in the battle and then you win and progress onward. That was very much to me what Botamo and Mageta were. And we, we didn't really get much of that. Uh, in any of the later tournaments because it was just kind of straight up, uh, you know, serious fights mostly. Or it was characters that we already knew, like when Tao Pai Pai comes back, like you already know everything about him the instant yeah. he shows up. Uh, and then it's, you know, kind of the rest of the heroes and Piccolo, like we know who everyone is. So, yeah, to have new characters in here. Uh, Botamo reminded me so much, it was like the Beyond fight during was that right? oh the the mu- mu- muscle tower yeah red yeah, ribbon yeah, yeah. stuff That's i mean right. it was kind of a similar shtick too like well everything bounces off how do we deal with it so goku is forced to think literally outside the box the ring here how do i deal yeah. with this so <laughs> i thought that was nice um and we got a little bit of tactical thinking there but then i feel like the tactical thinking went out the window for a little bit and then we're supposed to buy it again when goku has to deal with it later on it's like eh, i don't know we were kind of in and out on the intelligence factor there but the entertainment factor of all those fights kind of made up for it for me yeah i mean but both most fight I-, I think was probably like the overall weakest of uh of of, of most of them which is fine we um, need one of those yeah, that's that's fair. Um, yeah, I, well, when you're leading in with the tournament, it's ill-informed to lead with your best foot forward because it sets a really difficult precedence moving on. Of course, we did get a little bit of tactic from Goku, and I I really appreciated that both in the manga and in the anime. Which, by the way, I guess we there are comparisons to be made of the manga to the anime as we yeah, move for forward. Sure. Um, and like. I don't want to make that too much of a sticking point, but, and, and, you know, the manga, I loved that fight. The anime, a little more underwhelmed. I felt like, I felt like the uh, manga had a little more fun with it. Also, not, not, not a great animation day for that episode, to be honest. No, no. <laughs> uh, yeah. What, 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 what was, what, what was the joke about? I, I forget one of Oh, yeah, no, it, it looks like they're using the, the ripple tool from Premiere. <laughs> um, I've, I've yeah. used that, like... But anyway, the point being, uh, Botamo's fight, you know, I could appreciate it for what it was, but the other fights, I, I don't know, there was a, there were, I felt like there was a decent mixture of uh, strategy 
to outright just power versus power. Yeah, the, the Mageta fight was definitely strategy. The Frost stuff was also strategy, sort of, kind of. That was the mm-hmm. thing I was talking about earlier, where Goku was really smart about the Botama fight and how he wasn't smart during the Frost fight kind of irritated me, but then Vegeta made up for it. And then the Kaba stuff, there was no strategy involved there. Like, that fight was over before anyone entered the ring. Yeah. But I think that's <laughs> what made it so exciting uh, yeah. to watch. And then we'll get to the hit stuff uh, later on. So I I can't wait to talk about Kaba. All right, we'll oh, yeah. we'll get there. And uh, yeah, Mageta, I actually really enjoyed that stuff because of uh, I feel like he actually got kind of the most character development where he was uh, insulted and he took it really personally like you really felt for that robot there uh, and that no he's not a robot he's a metal man there's a very distinct difference he's an organic life form I really yeah. enjoyed how every time someone had uh, like an objection there there was a, a good reason for him to be there yeah it was so funny because I, I mean like I don't know maybe call me a simpleton but like immediately like when that fight was over and suddenly he was all like upset and oh crying. he's so dejected like, oh, yeah no. i know i know it's cute like, I, I don't know I, I i i have a huge affinity for i mean i love robot characters and toriyama's robot toriyama robots are, are the best yeah i, I mean it's, it's funny because even you know like the chrono trigger fans and us is like oh he looks kind of like robo i know Oh yeah, no, that was that was the first. There was Winnie the Boo. Yep. Um, there was there was Robo from Chrono Trigger. Robo, not Tarble, uh, not Frieza, uh-huh. and not Cell. Yeah, more or less. And like, yeah, and and also like just um the the specifically the Megeta fight, like a lot more than the Botama fight. Uh, with like you know Shampa kind of being sneaky with you know the sort of cube version of the the force field around the ring and everything and like you know an an actual kind of like different sort of weak point uh, for Vegeta in that way yeah it was it was just very different so okay like I've I've not I feel like maybe like Dragon Ball GT had a couple like kind of gimmicky sort of fights like that but it was still sure. kind of pretty unique. And, uh, and yeah, it just like kept, it, it kept you guessing. Like it was kind of a cool, like, and also like the fact that it lasted a little bit longer than you expected. Cause I was kind of thinking Mageta was going to be like just the one and done episode, like Botamo. Mm-hmm. And then they were going to jump right into hit after that. Um, but, uh, no, it was, it was actually like a lot more entertaining than I thought. And I don't know if, if, uh, Mageta is going to be one of those characters that we'll get to see again a little bit more in depth later. I feel like they're, they're probably, probably you know, not. Favoring, yeah. They're fa- favoring like the, the more humanistic looking, you know, pretty, it's, prettier characters. It's going to be I Kaba guess, and but... Hit, if anyone that we learn more about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel like yeah. they told us so much about Mageta. That's why we won't see any more from yeah. him, but. But but he yeah. he was a fun little side venture. Like I I I have a soft spot for him. Yeah. Like in the midst of all. I enjoyed other, him. Like... I enjoyed the fight as well. I thought it was different. But I also thought that was kind of the start of we're changing the rules. No, we're not changing the rules. We're fighting about the rules. We're changing the rules. Well, the rules don't matter. Our right, guys, stop. I just like <laughs> enough. <laughs> just let me punch something for Christ's sake. <laughs> all right, let's talk about about Mister Frost. Uh, which there was, I mean, so much discussion about like even just from that one image of him when when the obviously the manga chapter of revealing who the universe six characters mm. was ahead of time yeah. and there was probably the most amount of talk about frost and, and kaba kind of in tandem actually first of all real quick before we get into that because I, I feel like maybe one of you guys might know this uh if not yourselves maybe by proxy from someone who is more fluent to the language so frost is played by Ryusei Nakao, right who yeah. has now been Frieza, Kula, and um, uh, Lord Child as well. Uh, he was also Kriza in uh, yeah, uh, Eros. Yes. yes. So. <laughs> um, so is is there, if you know, is there any distinct way of speaking that Frost has or any kind of like particular way of performing uh, that Ryusei Nakao does on Frost compared to Frieza and the other members of, of like his family, as it were? Uh, Kula is definitely a little different. I actually got to ask him that question at uh, an amazement in 2013. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you've met him before. Oh my God, Nakao is just the chillest. Uh, sorry. he's. The <laughs> <laughs> I actually didn't mean it when I said it. As soon as I said no, it, like, no, what am sure, I doing? Own sure it, you didn't. Own it. I got to commit to it if I'm going to do it. Uh, he was the, the most badass dude on the planet. He understands way more English. English than he lets on too. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, he says he plays cool, it's just more direct. He's not really flowery with it. It's just kind of like standard speaking. Yeah, that was something I actually picked up on when I was rewatching the movie in Japanese for when we were doing the abridged version. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I rewatched and I'm like, oh man, while you know Frieza is this eloquent, flowery speech, and you know I you know, love Ryusuke Nakao's voice, his cooler 
is much more like upfront and in a little deeper and it's yeah, like he's just real direct with how he talks there yeah and it's it's kind of intimidating like yeah that. yeah it made, it made cooler like this while fla- uh, you know, scott the fact that you're saying little... cooler is killing me it's through my heart here <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry cooler, cooler and freezer cooler. <laughs> um cool and freezer there we go well, well obviously like frost is is very like, like when he when he first speaks like he's he like immediately you like him. It's like whoa, this is, this is surreal. It's like if, mm. it's like if Frieza were like this friendly, like outgoing, nice kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. It's so so weird. the way he talks at the start is almost the way that Trunks speaks, where it's very polite and formal, mm-hmm. uh, and not backhanded the way that Frieza talks, where you can tell he's kind of like dancing around his words. Um, yeah. Frost is being direct, but he's being really polite about it. And then he, as we learn more about him, he just starts slipping into just straight up. Frieza, uh, yeah, 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 with there, with so. the with the with the semi foul language and, and being insulting and everything. It's funny too because I'm I'm flashing back to like one of the very first podcast episodes where you guys were talking about the difference in speech styles all the, with all the characters and everything. Mm, yeah. And like you were, t- I think Julian, uh, who's uh, Konzenshu's like kind of longtime translation man, uh, he uh, he was talking about how there, like you know there were there were similarities but distinct differences between. Trunks and Frieza. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I and I wonder about if like if if Frost in the beginning of his appearance is a little bit more like Trunks. Uh, funnily enough, yeah, but yeah. Um, sorry, carry on, Scott. You were saying I am somebody who is by and large a fan of you know casting uh, casting along the lines of um, similar characters that are, are homages to other characters or you know like descendants of other characters. But this was actually one of those times where I was actually sort of not enjoying the fact that they used Ryu Senakao. Hmm. Um, largely because I was like, okay, so you've given it like Ryu Senakao's Frieza voice is slimy, no matter how you cut it. Yeah, yeah. And when we when we were introduced to him, I'm like, that's I'm getting a lot of dissonance with this. I, did, I like the moment I heard it, all I could think was, you know, they're just trying to keep that Frieza feel, and I don't feel like that was necessarily what they should have done. Um, even with the way that he was talking to them, there was just a part of me, like, as somebody who even understands Japanese, I'm like, I get what they're going for, but ah, uh, there, there was, it, it, my personal opinion was they sh- maybe should have gone with someone else. Well, the. Who do you go with, though? Because yeah, I mean, then, then then you do have that problem. Well, it, it's interesting because okay, so I won't pretend I know how the the Japanese uh, voiceover industry works. My my assumption is it might have just been as simple as you know what we like Nakao a lot. We love working with him. We love having him you know in the ensemble together. Let's just go with him for this. I do understand the complete. You know, I talked talked a lot about that, like when the episodes were airing, Scott. And from from a creative side, I do understand the frustration with that because, like, you know, on on the other hand, it's like, oh, you know, yeah, it would have been cool if he was differentiated by having his own distinct actor and everything. I guess at the same time, with with the show like Dragon Ball, I think the reason that I accept it is because it is one of those shows, uh, you know, m- much like how a lot of American cartoon shows work, where they have, you know, a lot of people playing multiple multiple characters within the same uh universe i mean even even uh recently i was just finishing watching through uh young justice and uh you know they they make very clever use of you know having a lot of the, especially like the the veteran uh voice actors playing like you know up to three sometimes even four different characters in the same episode and how they very cleverly use nolan north for both superboy and superman Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, but yeah, and that's the thing. That's exactly what I mean. Is I think that 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 might have been the same sort of mentality of like, okay, well, if he's supposed to kind of be like the Frieza equivalent, you know, individual of this universe, and you know, we want to have it more have the impact of okay, it's what if Frieza was a good guy, even though obviously that didn't turn out to be the case. Which is another um, thing to touch on. But I, I just want to wrap up on the voice there. I, yeah. I think oh, sure, the sure. the comparison to American cartoons and how you'll have a voice actor playing multiple roles. I think that doesn't apply apply here with the, um, these particular performers. Nakao is above and beyond anything like that. And where you'll have uh, really talented folks over here like Billy West, who can do multiple roles and do it in completely distinct voices. Um, mm-hmm. it, yeah, some of the folks over there can do that. Specifically Koichi Yamadera, the man of a billion voices. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> he's one of the few that you can do something like that with. Um, Nakao, his, his voice especially with regard to this franchise, 
is that character. And I think having him do any other role is funny thing is there. We got him as tambourine before we ever got him as anything related to Frieza. (laughs) Uh, And I think it's tough going back to tambourine and being like, eh, no, you're just Frieza. What are you doing here? You're, you're, you're primordial Frieza. (laughs) Right. Yeah. yeah, In in many ways. I mean, Nakao has killed Kudidin, uh, multiple times here (laughs) as different characters. Um, (laughs) but I don't know where I'm going with this, but I'm pretty much, I think I get what you mean. This character, you kind of have to, there's not much else you can do. And I think where it uh, it really breaks down is he's evil. No, he's not evil. He's nice. Wait, no, he's actually evil. Uh, And I think the the character kind of overshadows the performance there. And I think that brings everything into question. Well, kind of jumping into that point too. So in terms of Frost's big reveal, uh, you know, in the midst of the battle, I, uh, much like the arc in general, it wasn't what I expected, but I didn't dislike it. Uh, I feel like the way that they kind of um, went about the whole thing and like the setup of having um, the kind of the threefold strike of Piccolo, Goku and Vegeta Mm. um, was actually kind of cool. It was like it was sort of a clever use of how they went through that and everything. And the fact that it was like in, in essence, it was almost like, oh, this is the, you know, the thing that interrupts the tournament, but the tournament was still able to to carry on. Uh, you know, unlike you know, previous stuff, like with like with the Majin Buu thing and everything, we're just okay. That's the end, and you know, we're just leaving behind. Yeah, they never go Mr. back to it. There, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Satan and eighteen and and Trunks and Goten to finish the rest of that, quote unquote. Um, yeah, with 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 the whole Frost thing, like I I, I felt bad because um, at first with like oh, okay, you know, it it, it kind of sucked. The Buu didn't get to do anything, obviously. Although I, yeah. I I I loved I loved the joke of why. But it was also like, oh man, I would have liked to see him fight at least somebody in in this arc. Boo versus um, Nageta could have been pretty fun. Yeah, yeah, or or, or Potama maybe even. Um, although that, that might have lasted five seconds. Uh, but uh, but yeah, Piccolo, I felt kind of bad that like, he didn't get to do a whole lot in comparison. But um, his his little stint with Frost uh, was still pretty interesting. And then kind of leading up until. Uh, you know, Vegeta, it was just such a satisfying, like, okay, because Vegeta didn't get to be the one, obviously, who finished up Frieza yeah, yeah. Uh, in the Resurrection F movie and the adaptation of it in Super. Right, he, like, he so, deserved it here. He needed it. We all needed it for him, so. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it just being such a, like, I, I think the TV trope is the, the curb stomp battle. I'm just like, oh, this is, this is like, my fan boners going through the right, roof of right. just, like, how great this is. Well, real quick, I do want to talk about Piccolo and Vegeta there, because it's sure. what I love Super's... Uh, been able to do is just have these little one-off moments and Piccolo's like I don't stand a chance do I no well you can at least maybe like wear him down slightly for me and the fact that those two are on the same page with each other and still kind of hate each other but still kind of respect each other (laughs) I I love that actually actually Goku and Piccolo's relationship is one of my favorite things about Super yeah they're great too Uh, yeah yeah, like I like the fact that they they understand each other now. Like they are in a full yeah. They're basically friends, not just you know guys who respect each other who fight with each other. They're like full on. That's I love that. Yeah, Goku and Piccolo are where Goku and Vegeta will be at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, and it, it is funny to see like kind of that particular trio's interaction, kind of like all the stuff with them just kind of like whispering to each other of just like did you see that yeah i saw that yeah that was weird like just even that kind of stuff like that that's like really like cool to see that like with these characters now that i think that that's like even just a thing that shows like these characters really do sell this new show so much with everything there's another part to that uh when we get into the cavalp stuff i want to get into a little bit of that too but right. oh for sure yeah um, to speak about frost real quick the whole reveal that he was evil didn't love it didn't hate it i thought it was a like i a lot of people were saying like it's just frieza again i'm like well kind of yeah and but i think that was also the point and they underscored it really well uh they're like you know whether it's universe seven or universe six frieza is still frieza uh and I, I think that's an important point to make and i feel the same way as you were like i didn't love it I didn't hate it just kind of happened all right i'm ready let's go i like the kind of evil he was though whereas frieza ruled over everybody this guy was underhanded and like he's more evil because of that because kind of, of. yeah like he's like oh i'm a good guy i'm the guy who saves everybody in my universe <laughs> oh but you actually stop the walls and then i take all the credit and i thought oh that's cool i like that <laughs> like that part about it i actually really appreciated because by and large Frieza was just, you know, flat out evil, you know, I kill everybody who gets in my way. No, this guy, 
this guy's a businessman. Yeah, yeah. He's like, he's the CEO of his own underhanded company that just... Tr- he's a slimy 80s businessman, and I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. He Futurama's is that keep, guy. He's good. If, 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 if Futurama is just going to keep integrating itself into fucking DBZ in this episode. I will do it at every point I, again. <laughs> <laughs> um, Speaking of planetary delivery services... Uh, well, no, I, oh, I want to yeah, save him for last. Talk about him, don't we? <laughs> we'll I, I want to I want to save him for very yeah, last because that that'll kind of lead into after the tournament is over. Yeah, the fr- frost was cool. I uh, I'm also interested to see. I mean, if I feel like they they're probably going to end up going with Chris Ayers uh, for the dub at some point. So I'm curious to hear him playing nice guy. You know, recent dub phrases that we've had, and then going I'm, right back into the you know the goodness as as per usual again. I'm secretly pulling for his brother. <laughs> I, I, that would be Gre- Gregor as, as Frost would also be kind of because he has a very similar too, yeah. voice, but he also is a little bit higher. I don't know. I, I just love the idea of his brother playing him because then at least you have, yeah. you have a connection there. I mean, yeah. I know we have Scott right here, so if Scott can just like plug his ears and <laughs> go away for a little bit, but I, I, I kind of would like them to cast some Team Four Star equivalents of characters. I think that would be really. Hysterical. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, Mar- Martin, you better move to Texas if you're listening to this. <laughs> um, that, would, that, that would actually be really funny. Uh, let, let's let's go to Kaba. Uh, yes. Okay. So so Kaba, I think uh, may, maybe Scott. I feel like you might have the most. You sound really thing excited to say yeah. about him. I, yeah. Okay. Why, why don't you lead off with him? Go go right ahead. Kaba was a character I really wanted because when we were going to the other universe, I was like, we're gonna get Saiyans. We're gonna. I know. I know. We're gonna get Saiyans. How is it gonna happen? And they did it the way, basically the way that I wanted. Uh, they're the opposite yeah. of what they are in Universe se- uh, 7. They are good guys. And, and I was I was a little worried. Like, I saw Hattopel's design. Or- <laughs> wow. You did it. Uh, I saw take a shot. Kappa's take a shot. <laughs> and the first thing that crossed my mind was, okay, he's either monotone and, like, not, like, he's monotone and, like, morally neutral at best, or he's a good guy. And they went flat out like, no, he's not only a good guy, he's a lot like Trunks. Mm, yeah. And I was like, oh, I love this. Because, you know, the pr- they're basically, what if Frieza never got a hold of them and somehow they straightened their shit out? <laughs> yeah. Th- that was some of my favorite dialogue for Fuji. Just like, yeah, we were really strong. So we kind of conquered everyone. And Cup was like, yeah, we're really strong. That's why we protect everyone. And to see yeah, just oh, that difference there great... was just perfect writing, I think. And and that was in, that was in the manga chapter too. I think yeah, that interaction. Yeah, was, yeah. yeah. I, I, it's yeah. It's so like it's so perfect because it just it really makes them both go like, oh, oh, I didn't I didn't see it that I way. I never considered wow. that perspective before. <laughs> and I like and I like that Vegeta's like I want to see I, I want to visit sometime. I want to see what that's all about. And God, let that happen. I would, yeah, I would kill. We're for we're, an we're gonna. Get, I I feel like we are totally gonna get that at some point. And so even even if it's like 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 a smaller arc, maybe compared to the other stuff. Uh, with the bigger things kind of on the horizon. But I, I, th- I feel like we'll probably get that at some point. Yeah, sure. I feel like they mentioned it too many times for them to do nothing. That would just be cruel to us. Yeah. I also, f- I also found it really funny that they changed uh, s- uh, the name of the planet. I think it was always planned to be s- uh, Sadala in the anime. It's supposed to just but- straight up salad, yeah. Yeah, um, which, you know, I, I'm okay with either. I just found that funny. Like, it's it's Sadala. Or no, it's Salada. Or no, it's... Uh, it's whatever. Soba. No, it's Shu. No, it's... I don't know. Fuck it. <laughs> Kappa, Kappa's... It's interesting because I, he's kind of the most, like, a contemporary anime protagonist character, you know, that, than, than Dragon Ball has ever really had, like, yeah. since Trunks. Um, because he is that like, you know, I'm a, I'm a like, you know, eager young, like I'm going to save the world, everybody, like oh, what's yeah. going on kind of so character. So optimistic and like his world is crumbling down before him, but he still is looking toward the future and still wants to help everyone. And he just wants to learn like to please just teach me. And that's my favorite part of that fight. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. it was. I, I loved how Vegeta had it planned out from the very start. Didn't tell anyone. And the fact that everyone was actually a little worried w- was good. I- I'd like to see that as he, as Cabo was able to change there. Uh, he was getting his attacks in. But that instant where he's like, never forget how this feels. I'm like, and it's mm-hmm. over. That's it. Yeah. That was done. That Oh, so good. So good. By the way, real quick, before I forget, one part of that, um, 
like jumping just a little bit forward, um, like when he goes Super Saiyan Blue, the look on Hit's face, he looks over to Goku and Goku's just got this <laughs> he, shit in his He's grin. staring right back at him like, <laughs> and he's like, he's like, yeah, we could do that. Bring it, motherfucker. Because <laughs> the entire time you're like, okay, Hit's the guy. Hit's the guy. Right, right. That's going to be the real fight. And he's just sitting there like, I'm not impressed with any of this. But that at that one moment, Goku knows because he sees him look up. I agree. I love it. Goku was not even looking at the fight anymore. He just wanted to see Hit's reaction. That's why he yeah. was there. He's such a cocky asshole. I love Goku. <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, see not not to not to downplay the Hit fight because I do want to talk about that in just a moment. But I think that probably. My favorite moment overall, my favorite like single episode overall of the entire tournament was Vegeta versus Cabot. I agree. I feel. I, agree. I feel like that that fight, uh, just just that half hour experience in and of itself was such a good, strong like like beginning, middle, and end story. I mean, granted, obviously it is set up before the fight happens for sure, but just that that little section of it of like. He's teaching him the only way that he he knows how by beating the ever loving <laughs> shit out of him. Right. In in you know in a, in a in a tried and true like pretty well animated, well directed Dragon Ball Z style traditional fight of two Saiyans and like and you know and Kaba having like you know a, a, a real traditional like I'm learning how to transform into a Super Saiyan for the first time kind of moment. Like it, it it's almost like. It's almost like you abridge, haha, everything about D what, what makes DBZ like DBZ in the span of a single episode. And it, like, like it's, it's a tournament, it's Saiyans finding each other, a transformation, a, a heartfelt lesson, and like, you know, characters like speaking to each other through their fists. It's like, it's like it has it all in one episode. And it's like, this is fucking perfect. Like, it's such a good episode onto itself. And I feel like, because Dragon Ball Z is one of those things where like, you know, having a, like favorite episodes, like it's kind of difficult because you typically think so. You know, if you think in like chunks of episodes or like you know specific moments or yeah, or an entire it's, arc. It's usually serial format. It was the, like there are the big ones, like the transformation episodes that are kind of like the keystones of it. Oh yeah, arc. yeah. But yeah, but but yeah, ha having just this episode of like a Vegeta versus Kaba. Uh, you know, in and of itself, like that, and it, like it, I don't know, I it, 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 that was like the biggest highlight for me. I think it was said, just a good span of episodes, and I think Vegeta got everything we wanted from him, which was fight, oh, with, yeah. fight with strategy, beat Frieza to a pulp in one second, <laughs> and then become the teacher to someone else. Like Vegeta has reached that point. Yeah, him becoming a teacher made my heart swell. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I think that that is actually my favorite part about all of that is that it we got legitimate character development i think that was super important like that we got this is vegeta as a teacher i was in love uh, not, not not to skip too far ahead because i wanted to mainly wanted to keep on track with this but I, I do have to wonder because it has to do with that point of development so we do know confirmed from a, a recent interview that uh, the kind of folks at consensu were very kind enough to uh, translate with uh, takashi kusao who is back to playing future trunks again uh, in the arc that's about to start um, we know that finally my, my fantasy is coming true and future Trunks and Kid Trunks are going to interact with each other. Oh my god, right? Uh, and, and, you know, Kid Trunks is a completely different character from future Trunks. I do wonder about if maybe, like, he's going to be a little inspired. And, and I will say, I would, I would love to see Vegeta training Kaba and Kid Trunks to like be better fighters like together like that would be super cute or what we're gonna see is Vegeta takes more of an interest in Kaba and Little Trunks is even more scarred than he already is then like Aww. daddy won't pay attention to me <laughs> I hope we don't get that because that would be the heart wrenching <laughs> but, uh, or maybe I do want that because I want to be heart wrenched okay that that said uh let's let's talk about Captain Purple uh hit um who I mean, you know, pro probably Frost and Kaba, if they had the most, like, discussion, I think Hit had the most, like, theories about when he was first revealed. I remember a big thing going around was people thought, like, oh, maybe he's, like, a Namekian, like, you know, disguised in some kind of, like, weird, like, suit or something. Like, people didn't, and, and to be honest, we still don't really know what entirely his deal is, aside from just, he's an assassin. He's a he's an incredibly powerful assassin, and he is arguably the strongest character in uh, universe six aside from it, you know technically maybe you know Shampa and, and Vada so you know possibly um and even then that that might even be debatable yeah Shampa seemed a little scared there but more probably just taken off guard and 
Anyway, I'm not going to get into the strength stuff. But um, (laughs) yeah, just going back to the designs, I feel like people weren't giving Toriyama and the crew enough credit. It was like, yeah, we got a free zone. Yeah, we got... Say in am I fitting in yet? Yes, Did you're you're so, right at home with all of us dub trash. Continue on, <laughs> filthy <laughs> casuals. Um, yeah, you can say sign. I don't give a shit. Whatever. <laughs> I feel like people didn't give everyone enough credit here. Like we already have two of the same from that universe. Like it's probably going to be something else. He's not going to be just the Namekian. He's not going to just be someone who absorbs things a la Cell. So I was glad to see that. Uh, my opinion or my thoughts were validated and vindicated there. <laughs> Always a good feeling. <laughs> um, well, with Hit, I, I, you know, I think kind of more or less he served as, uh, I guess, more of a, a development point for Goku. Um, yeah. Kind of yeah. like, kinda like how, how Kaba was a, was a big part of Vegeta's development, but, but I still feel like he was a full-fledged character. Hit, um, I, I feel like Hit didn't quite have, like, the same level of, of depth, but... Uh, what we got to know about him was still pretty intriguing. And, you know, the the bottom line, which I think was, you know, kind of at the forefront of this, is he made for an incredibly, you know, uh, interesting and in-depth and worth it fight scene. Uh, Scott, I know that you have a lot to say about uh, the actual fight itself when we got up to that point, because you were, you were like, losing your shit when that one was happening with how good the animation was and everything. Oh, yeah. Like, I, some people take uh, issue with, um, is it Nakitate? Oh, is that the, the, is that the a- animator yeah, yeah. for that one? Yeah. Um, okay. they, some people take issue with his art style. I think they're crazy. I think they're insane. <laughs> um, I think, and like, I love the ultra smooth, like low detail stuff. I think it helps capture the speed, the power, the dy- like dynamic camera angle so much better. Yeah, I like the moment Goku, just the, the stuff with Vegeta versus Hit was better animated than 90% of the rest of the show. <laughs> um, and had so much more movement and... Did, did he did he also work on F? Because I feel like I, I recognized I, a little bit of like his style in couple, that, he too. He probably did do a couple of cuts from F. I, I'd be surprised um, if he didn't. He's, he's one of uh, Toei's golden boys. But, well, yeah, I, I guess, um, you know, because... Uh, Obviously, like, Goku wasn't a new character, but we had, like, the semi kind of sort of, like, you know, Super Saiyan Blue, Kaioken combo, flourish, whatever, like, you know, purple rainbow all the way thing going on with that. Um, you know, we're, we're pretty okay for what it was. I, I like that it wasn't like, you know, we're making a big deal out of this as like a new transformation that will be in all the video games and all the fucking, you know, Dragon Ball Heroes cards now available at your local 7-Eleven or whatever. Uh, I'm glad that it kind of wasn't treated that way because like, I'm like, we don't need another transformation, like another like actual tried and true, true transformation yet, uh, if at all. And um, but but yeah, I, I I loved the kind of like dissection. It was like it was the kind of the most like nuts and bolts battle uh, in terms of like a DBZ type like non gimmicky one. Because while the Botamo and Mageta ones were you know more more gimmicky like Dragon Ball type tournament fights, Frost and Kaba and Hits uh, battles were more kind of uh, traditional DBZ. They still had like the tricks to them. Frost had the poison needle and everything. Kaba's was a you know kind of a a, a, a solid story in just that one episode hit was because it was at least well i mean I think like four or five episodes that was the whole fight from beginning to end and uh and and with that one it was like really dissecting the fuck like more so than maybe any other fight even in, in all of z about how exactly they were going about like topping each other and pushing each other to like do better and like you know really see like who i don't know who's gonna take this one like i'm not really sure like we because we didn't know what was going to be coming after this either we had no indication of what the next arc was going to be after this yeah so it very well could have been like oh like are they gonna lose and is earth gonna be taken to universe six like is, and then is that gonna lead into the next arc or something like because i think that was even a, a thought like maybe that would have led to vegeta visiting salad and there would have been some bigger conspiracy with champa or something like we didn't that know. seemed to be the prevailing theory is that we would actually lose and then that would uh kind of be the, the starting point for this larger universe arc i do love how we ended up winning no it was great yeah <laughs> <laughs> Which we'll we'll go into that when we go into the ka. Yeah, um, yeah. I, well, I, I guess what else is there to say about? You, I've been uh, talking actually, for thirty years. You guys about hit, about hit. When it comes to hit, there was one thing that I noticed that I, that I maybe read into a little much, but there was something I really appreciated about that character. He says that he's a thousand years old, right? The voice they use for him is definitely an older man. But uh, yeah, I, I think he. Yeah, he, he. I'm pretty sure he. Yeah, he. He had a very distinct like 
it, it kind of like how Kaba was the most sort of contemporary like anime character type thing. Hit, uh, Hit was very much like that typical kind of like I am the big like mysterious whatever type archetype of like a lot of current sort of shows. Uh, and that sort of way. And, and comparing him to, like, you know, Masako Nozawa, who's so, like, goofy, cartoony, old-school anime uh, on Goku was, like, kind of an interesting stark contrast. But, the, uh, but, you know, continuing along the lines of how old he sounded, I did get this feeling that he was an older man. Like, he's whereas seen everyone some else... Shit, yeah. Where even, like, you know, Ryo Horikawa's Vegeta, he still sounds older. You know, he's still very much in that, like, I'm in the prime of my life. Where Hit definitely sounds like he's this old assassin. Like, like he's he's seen some shit. He's been around the block. I mean, he's the Japanese voice for Wolverine in some things. And I just, I love, I loved that texture. I loved that idea because you don't get these grizzled old guys in Dragon Ball. And for a moment there, I was like, hey, you know, that's really cool. They could have just made him like kind of a pretty boy assassin. And no, they went, they kind of went like this, you know, again, weathered old assassin guy. I actually don't have a whole lot to say about Hit because I feel like this was kind of the expected, like you were saying, this was just a straight up DBZ fight. And you said there wasn't a gimmick to this fight. There's absolutely a gimmick to this oh, fight. Yeah. His, his yeah. time skip was the gimmick here. And I was starting to get a little bored of it with, I'm um, able to increase it. Well, I'm stronger. Well, I'm increasing it. Well, I'm stronger. Uh, like I kind of needed it to end maybe an episode before uh, it actually yeah, did. I, sh- I won't lie. Um, I kind of feel like it could have just ended with the Kaioken. Um, and it would have been like, then again, we would have gotten that fantastic ending. No, I, I think we still could have had that. I think just the length of the fight, it, it could have been yeah. chopped up and we would lose an episode, but gain a faster pace to it. Yeah, I, I, I will I say a, ni- a nice trade off uh, was that moment where Chozetsu Dynamics starts playing as the background. And music, it was pretty like, good. Yep, of, like, yep. Yeah, that that was like because, you know, when, when you get and, and, and that even is kind of like, you know, because. Obviously, in DBZ, you know, we, we've had many, many insert songs during, like, you know, really badass moments, of course. But I don't think – Dragon Ball's never done that where they have, like, the theme song as, like, the insert song or whatever. I did that, uh, I did that for the last episode right. of the Cell arc. Sure, um, yeah. And that, but that, that was, like, the, the ending of, like, what they thought might have been the ending of the show, yeah. practically. Um, um, but, but, uh, but, yeah, because that's also more of a contemporary anime theme, yeah. uh, thing to do mm-hmm. that. And it, it was just as, effect, as effective. It was really cool when that happened. And then the way that they ended the episode on that way, I was like, oh, my God, I actually am excited about what's going to happen. Next. Uh, if, there's, like, if there's any trope that I love is, you know, shit gets real when the theme song starts playing. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you know, um, that, that whole fight, that whole fight did have some really interesting stuff. I think the animation really helped pull through the gimmick. Just the whole, you know, Goku's movements when he jumps into that ring the first time. I was like, yes, this is what I love to see from Goku. Just trying his best to feel out his opponent. That's just Goku. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, well, yeah, I can definitely agree. Should have cut it down. By and large, that fight, I felt like it was a great climax to the entire uh, to the entire arc. Though, it is a little frustrating for Vegeta fans. Because it's like, yeah, he can't <laughs> use it very often. But he effectively just found a way of like, yep, if I ever want to, I can just pull out a Super Saiyan... Blue Kaioken times ten. Uh, although, although the fact that there are like genuine ramifications to that, yeah, and that yeah. you know the fact well, that yeah, that, I love uh, that know, by King, the way. Yeah, the fact that like that that Kai is like uh, maybe don't do that very often, if at all. Probably not a good idea. Like, there's a reason that you you know you you temper yourself with. Uh, with these transformations and power ups and stuff, so you know. Even Goku did say, like, this probably isn't gonna work, and I can't believe it actually worked. So that's the out for not abusing it. Might yeah, might have very just been like maybe like maybe it is just a one time like I'm pulling this out of my ass because I don't know what else I'm, I'm I'm gonna do or else we're gonna lose this or or you know I mean well granted that said you know he was under the impression that well even if I lose it's okay Monaka will defeat yeah, yeah. you let's talk about Monaka oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, wait, okay, so real, first, real quick, first, real quick, just sure, one sure. more thing about the Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken because I felt oh, like yeah, sure, I ahead. felt like it actually it it gave an explanation for something which was nice. Yep, can't use the Super Saiyan with the Kaioken because Super Saiyan's unstable, but Super Saiyan Blue is different, so let's do this shit. I was like, oh, cool, that's good. I think they may may have like hinted at that in the uh, Ano Yuchi Budokai, but to see it just flatly said like this is why Super Saiyan has never been used with Kaioken. Yeah, good. Oh, okay. That's great. Just yeah, about that the key sense. control. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, thank you. Like for 
some of us do get kind of caught up on why doesn't he just use that with that? And it's kind of nice when they, like, give not only a good reason, but they're like, and here's a workaround. Yeah, I totally forgot about the Super Kaioken thing during the other world tournament. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was a thing, wasn't it? So, so yeah, Monaka. I guess to start off, uh, so let, let's address the elf and other... I, I mean, obviously, we've been going into spoilers for this whole thing, everybody, so you, you know. But uh, how do we feel about... Nipples? The, you know, well, uh, uh, we I, I know how I feel about the nipples. Uh, how do we feel about the reveal of oh, he actually isn't the strongest guy that fought Beerus, which means that Goku basically is the strongest person in their universe, and Beerus is just trying to get him to not think Yeah, I think this was my biggest problem. Beerus is saying, all right, it was Monokai's brought along to be like this inspiration to Goku and make him want to try harder. Like, but but that's already what you are and what we... is and that's already what Goku is as a character anyway. Why do we need to bring him in? Like I, I didn't buy it. I still don't buy it. You had an entire universe. Like basically, all you have to tell Goku is. By the way, there's an entire other universe of fighters. You don't need anything else. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Like that is that is like a buffet in front of Goku. Of course, he's gonna dig in. Which is why I think we could have used Boo and just had the normal team. But Monica's been useful since then. So I do appreciate him being along for the rise. Like, I enjoy the character. I don't enjoy what the character represents as a story plot point. Yeah. And even, and the worst part is, he's a main part of one of the best filler episodes in the entire franchise. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, that fight against, uh, that fight against Goku. A Beerus wearing the Monaka costume. I was like, oh, this yeah. is great. Yeah, it was pretty fantastic, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I like I like the mon- character that Monaka is, even if he's just basically, like, they're almost uh, playing I don't know like what I'm ape. doing here. Uh. <laughs> to a certain extent, he's like a an accidental Mr. Satan. Yeah, yeah, that's a great way to put um, it. Well, well, kind of rewinding a little bit, If so if I'm remembering right, when Battle of Gods first came out, which was now a couple of years ago, I can't even believe that right. shit. If I'm remembering right, when when Beerus and Goku have that you know little conversation up in space uh, after like the fight is over, he tells them like of all the people that I fought against, you were the you were the second strongest. So that was established in that right. Movie. Except the the rest of the scene as that plays out is Goku's like, well, who's the first? And Whis is up there, and Whis coughs. Like that is the oh okay, yeah. Whis is number one. But then when we yeah. get into Super, Beerus has an entirely different discussion about it, and he cites this mm-hmm. period of time since he's fought this person, and Whis is there, and they're not talking to Goku about it. So it's an entirely mm-hmm. different context, entirely different conversation. He's clearly referring to someone else because we should be like, yo, that was me. Well, it's funny because I think for some reason, it's been a while since I've watched Battle of Gods, but I think even back uh, when I saw the movie uh, like a few times, I, I feel like I even did get the impression that it was somebody different and Weiss was just like kind of fucking around or whatever. Because I mean, obviously Weiss is just super, super strong, you know, stronger than Beerus in his own right. Um, but and again, not about like comparing the, the strength levels or whatever. It's more about, oh, I wonder if like how much of this they were like even thinking about or planning or whatever, like, you know, if at all, because we knew that they wanted to do more beyond Battle of Gods. We didn't know that Super was going to be a thing. We didn't know about Resurrection F. We didn't know about if they had anything about these new characters planned or whatever. No, 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 no. We do. We do know they had none of it planned because we know that as Super began production, they didn't have shit to do. <laughs> Fair so enough. it's very clear uh, that as of Battle of Gods, <laughs> between its initial script by Yusuke Watanabe and then when Toriyama came in, no, they were 100% not thinking about another TV series. True facts. Uh, well, that said, um, yeah, I guess, see, I'm torn. I'm conflicted on Monaka because, for one thing, I think he's hilarious in that he is just like, oh my god, I have great big nipples. And he's just like, whatever. And I'm like, what are you doing here? Kind of thing. Like In, in that kind of like, oh, you poor, stupid piece of shit, just like Mr. Satan kind of situation. At the same time, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if I wanted more. I don't know if I was expecting more from that. I don't know if it's also like I'm... I'm mildly like, I don't know how I feel about basically Team, team Universe 7 only being three characters, technically. And Vegeta uh, got to fight four of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I saw, I'm not entirely sure. I, I, I'm entertained by him, which I think is probably like the best thing to take away from it at the end of the day. But I'm not sure how I feel about Monaka as a character, like in general. But, uh, but then I, I guess kind of like, yeah, going off the heels of the tournament... 
uh, and kind of as we spin off with, with the discussion about Monaka in general, we've got, we had a little bit of filler uh, you know, after this as we're kind of leading up now into the trunk stuff. A lot of really cute episodes, uh, a lot of which involved Monaka at the centerpiece. Um, yeah, the, the, the mascot bobble-headed one was, was pretty great. Uh, the, the little baby pan episode, oh. uh, went down as like one of my new favorites. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. You were so um, mad at me. The moment we sat down, he's like, Hey, did you see the latest episode? I'm like, I hated it. I hated it. I thought it was awful. And he's got <laughs> mad at me. And I said, it nearly killed me because it was too cute. <laughs> I was about to be like, dude, no, what are you talking about? Yeah, I was like, no, it's like, it's like one of my, it, it was also one of my new favorite episodes of Super, like, just how oh, yeah, fucking did adorable it. No, it was. Absolutely. And, uh, and then, yeah, I mean, we have this little, like, the superhuman water arc, I guess, if you want to even call it that, <laughs> uh, you know, three or four whole episodes of whatever the fuck that like, was. Can I, can I Very... just lead in, like, if we're going to talk about that just sure. for a moment, one moment, I find sure. it hilarious that Toei was like, we're going to have an evil be- version of Vegeta. Before we have an evil version of Goku. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, well, we like, don't. What? We still don't know. We still don't know exactly what Black Goku is yet. Like, you know, we'll we'll see exactly what the details of that shit it's is. It's going but, to be an know. evil. It's going to be an evil-looking Goku voiced by Masako Nozawa, and I'm going to have a hard time not getting a heart on the entire time because evil Masako Nozawa is the best. Yeah, meanwhile, Taka's in a corner going, I fucking told you, I knew it, I knew it's Taka. Oh, yeah, no, Taka, <laughs> Taka called that shit. He's like, there's going to be an evil Goku, and I'm like, Toei's not that lazy. To, to be fair, to be fair, Taka thought that was going to be the case with the Universe 6 versus 7 stuff. So he wasn't, like, 100% right, but he was still right enough that he's pointing fingers and laughing all the fucking way to the bank. <laughs> so here, we talked about all these characters. Um, there's this little filler arcish kind of thing whatever disregard that for now what i want to talk about with you guys as we head toward the end of our discussion because i'm guiding mm-hmm. it here at this point now that we've been going over for an hour i'm taking control <laughs> back oh uh, yeah those are my rants what are you doing with those Car- uh things like production and writing uh, we had king ryu come in in charge uh, uncredited in charge oh, of right. this arc did you feel that made a difference and was it a noticeable difference to uh have some shift in production here yeah i think so um i think uh i think in comparison to the two movie adaptations you know barring the 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 fun entertaining little bits of filler in between uh the the beerus and golden freezes stuff yeah this was a very very nice change of pace it was like in terms of story it was a you know a huge uh upgrade i would say i think i think we're honestly going to see the fruits of this change um i think we've already seen like okay so Regardless of how the first half of that tournament arc went, there were there were some changes in the tone and at least the direction of things as that tournament went on. The moment we got out of that tournament, I felt like there was a breath of fresh air in terms of like the filler stuff was really fun. like the filler stuff was already fun and interesting. I felt like it was at a new level after we got out of that tournament, and even even with how like unanticipated and unenthralling like the latest one was there were still a lot of interesting parts to it that it, all in all made it a completely you know, digestible like story but with the preview that we're getting for uh the next arc i think that's really where we're going to see king ryu like actually have a huge hand in how things are I agree. Yeah, yeah. How did how, how did you feel about it, Mike? <laughs> I think it was noticeable the instant this arc began. There was just something about the way things were being written, uh, composed, and structured that oh, this everyone's taking it seriously all of a sudden. Whether that was incidental or because of the flack things had been uh, receiving for so many months, there uh, it was noticeable and it was appreciated. Uh, I think this arc was vastly different from the two adaptation arcs that came before it. And uh, I, th- I think it was very important for that to happen. And I think it's a detriment to the series to have those two arcs yes. be the introduction to um, how, how it changed after that. And I think that's going to be a tough sell for the international market there. Yeah. It's a shame because I mean, like I- I've gotten, uh, I've gotten newer friends uh, into Dragon Ball uh, thanks to showing them uh, Kai 
uh, that's been my kind of like new, I've, I've talked about that extensively on the podcast uh, before where like, that's been my like gateway of getting like, you know, people who either didn't like DBZ growing up or, or didn't watch it at all to get into it. And they've gotten very much into it, but I'll be totally honest. Uh, you know, once, you know, whatever fucking century from now we get those Kai Boo episodes over here, hopefully this year, I'm crossing my fingers. Uh, you know, w- when that's done and I want to get them further into it, I mean, I'll be honest, my, my instinct is like, Watch Battle of Gods, watch Resurrection F, and then start. We'll start a Dragon Ball Super episode, whatever you know. And you know, maybe show the filler episodes in between. But like, really, basically starting Super at this arc. And I kind of hate to say that, but I mean, that's that's my genuine kind of opinion of like, you know what? I I and, and you know, there were there were some extra little flourishes and little differences about the the movie adaptation, uh, you know, arc, arcs that Especially were kind of cool and everything. Yeah, but but overall, honestly. I, I would still be like, just watch the movies. Like they're they're more digestible, more overall enjoyable kind of rides compared to the the show. As imperfect as uh, Resurrection F was, um, and mm-hmm. the additions to uh, to the F arc that I actually really liked, Tagama. Yeah, I was like, oh cool. Like Tagama oh, yeah. more of a character. Yeah, yeah. Oh, balls dropped on every side. Yeah, yeah. Like and and, um, and I, but... I don't want to go. I don't want to go too much into that. But... Yeah, but no, I, I mean, look. look we're, as I think, Mike, you've you've said this also extensively in the podcast. Like, as people who enjoy the shit out of this franchise, we yes, we are allowed to not like everything about it at at, at times. It it happens. It's it's whatever. Yeah, but at the same time, I think all three of us have said enough things that we really enjoyed about this arc in particular. And I, you know, I'm happy to because uh, like I was actually a little hesitant about this because Super, I you've probably seen Mike, I've had a lot of issues with super um i i you know i it's, it's not that i don't realize that the original series were flawed i just want them to evolve and get better but mm. i'm really glad we had this because i like saying really good things that i like about dragon ball and i'm glad there were so many things that i liked about this art about about new about new dragon yeah ball about stuff, yeah about new, know, like because i love battle of gods and i enjoyed resurrection f so like to, when I see those arcs redone, and then I find myself at so at such odds. Well, well, here, here's a question too, because this was a thing kind of going around for a while. Do you think that this could have been, or would you have wanted to see this arc as a movie, like after Resurrection F, or do you think that this particular story kind of served its its purpose better as oh well, much better uh, as like a, like, much a, like a series of show yeah as a series okay, I agree. yeah, yeah. And I, right. I don't think you do this into a movie I think it loses too much. I think you speed up those fights even more. And while I think some of them needed to be sped up, I think a, a tournament like this is appropriate as a week to week kind of show. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, cause I, I saw a lot of people like thinking that, and even I had the thought of like, maybe, but like with it, yeah, with the tournament where it's like, you have to, you know, give a fair amount of time to enough characters. It's like, yeah, I feel like it would have, it wouldn't have been like as engaging as a, as a film. Um, but it, it definitely worked as a series. Yeah. Overall, this was a really fun, like last, few months now well like maybe like four four months or so i think we had this arc going it on it started for. in january yeah yeah like very end of january Damn. and yeah it was a, it was a really fun ride uh i'm i'm looking you know th- between this the little bits of filler afterward and then now the information that we do have about this new trunks arc coming out uh i i've been i've been having a really good time with it i'm looking forward to what it is that we have even more which i think i think like when we finished the Resurrection F, uh, you know, adaptation episodes. We were talking about, you know, we're we're still excited about what what's to come. We're looking forward to, you know, what what's coming next. And now I think like we're all really, really even more so off the heels of like how much better this was and how interesting this next arc, you know, may be just based on a little bit of information that we have about it. Um, you know, Super I think is like in a, in a much better place with like fandom as a whole i think everybody's like much more like okay i'm in for the long haul let's let's do this kind of thing D- any other closing thoughts about about this anything else you guys want to share about it I, I enjoyed or? having another tournament arc i feel like we were overdue for something like this it gave us a, a nice introduction to a larger universe out there and i i'm looking forward to seeing what else is in store for us yeah and you know i feel like the last time we had a real tournament arc you couldn't even say sell because i wouldn't i wouldn't that wasn't really a tournament. No, no definitely not. No, yeah. last time we had a tournament was flat out just OG Dragon Ball. So yeah, no, it it's really cool to go back to like I think Dragon Ball Super has been all about like, hey, you know, let's 
let's try and do what GT did and go back to a lot of the uh, a lot of the old ideas and characters and 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 tone and sometimes successful, sometimes not. I felt like they were largely su- successful here, though. Almost forgot because uh, we were kind of uh, alluding to this at the beginning. But uh, I do want to give special mention to uh, the 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 universal like giant golden super Shenlong uh, and the wish maid mm. oh, in the yeah, end, yeah. which that was that was I actually thought that was really yeah cute, we should kind of yeah we should touch on that before we wrap up. I think um, it really humanized those characters, and I think we needed something like that to show that they are just like everyone else. They just happen to be uh, kind of a dimension beyond in terms of strength, but everyone um, is still a a human being at heart, even if they're a cat god, <laughs> a, sh- a hairless purple cat creature. I I, I um, loved I loved when I loved how uh, how Beerus was translating like he and it's just Japanese backwards. I didn't even know that until someone told me um, the oh, language huh. he was using. <laughs> and I love the fact that he's like, I don't know how to translate that. Just say it then. <laughs> it's like I love like he doesn't know how to translate. I was like, that's such a funny little moment. <laughs> um, but you know, despite the fact that that summoning was a thing. Yeah, it sure was. It sure I, was I'm going to move my piece of cardboard paper across the screen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, there have been summonings of monsters from Yu-Gi-Oh that were better animated than that. But, you know, besides that, I loved that wish. And I'm super glad that that was the thing. I'm wondering if it's going to, if there's going to be fallout from that. Well, I mean, speaking of fallout, uh, I think let's wrap it up with uh, how the arc actually ended. And that's we have the king of everything. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, Uh Hey, let's all get together again sometime and amuse me. This was good, yeah? Let's do it again, yeah? I am, I am Togepi, literally. Amuse me. (laughs) Feed me. Uh, Yeah, well, I mean, all all I'll say about that is I am looking forward to that, but I hope it's a while from now. I hope that we at least, that either the Trunks arc is decently long or we have the trunks arc and then maybe something else maybe like with universe six going to like you know to planet Sadal and maybe even go to the universe six version of earth or something and see how that's like well, um you know just just a fair amount of time do you think the trunk stuff will lead into them coming back around to this or are they going to be completely distinct separate arcs if that is indeed what we go to later on um i have a feeling that the the future trunks like the the black goku stuff that's about to start is going to be its own thing i think it's going to be kind of self-contained more or less yeah like at best we might have some stuff with jocko because obviously as they continue to let us know time travel is a serious universal offense you can't do that um, like may- maybe at best we'll have some stuff about that. And Toriyama, I think, even said in a uh, in a recent interview about like it's gonna be a little all over the place and a little complicated in terms of the time travel shit. Just don't think about it too hard. Just enjoy it for what it is. Or I think so- something yeah, like yeah. that. I can't yep. remember. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. I can accept that. The time travel in DBZ is it's multiverse theory. So like it, it is what it is. It's whatever. Um, you know. As, uh, but yeah, I, I, I have a feeling this will probably be like its own self-contained thing. And then when we're done with that, we'll get back to the main stuff. And then, you know, but, but I hope that like the, the big, like, you know, multi-universe, the 12 universe arc, uh, you know, tournament thing happens like maybe like later, later this year, or maybe even next year, depending on how long this is going to go. Yeah, I hope that's where it goes. I, I would appreciate a break in between. I don't want to go from a tournament directly into a tournament. And they probably feel the same way, and that's why they wanted to have something in between. Uh, I think this is a yeah. good buffer in between those. Awesome. Oh, well, we didn't talk about the most important part of the arc. What's that? When Goku grabbed the King of the Universe's wing. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, I, I, I love I, it, like, I, just like whatever of a character he is from fucking Jocko. <laughs> I love that. I like. I love Jocko and the King of the like the King of the Universe, or like as a galaxy or universe. Or I think he's, I think it's you know King of the galaxy, King of the Galaxy. Yeah, yeah. 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 I just yeah, thought that yeah. they're sitting around like, hey, best the popcorn. This is great. Yeah, they just <laughs> straight up did a dick joke in Dragon Ball. That's uh, pretty good. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm it's just, again it, returning to the old. The sure, it's return to form. Yeah, more or less. Yeah, it, it, it's yeah. I, I didn't even mention like the other uh, Supreme, the the the, the Kaioshin, the, like from the other universe, and then just like yeah, we're here too. It's just like oh man, it's just like the fucking who's who yeah, of, like, nice. deities, deities that barely matter in the face of the gods of destruction. By the way, I, I I do absolutely adore the continuing of Toriyama's trend of all the gods are just bizarre and not at all godly no they're just people they're just like yeah we we look over things i guess whatever there, there is a part of me that is praying that zeno osama is in fact the top like i feel yeah. like i feel like okay 
You literally called them the Omni King. Let it be. I hope. I hope that the. I, okay. Th- this is this is entirely me, and I, I don't care if they don't do this, but I kind of hope that like, because obviously we have like you know dub versions of these of these characters' names who aren't like they don't have names, their titles. I hope Zeno is the Every King because <laughs> I love that. It'll probably be the Omni King because that's every seems to be, every, like, every king is accepted. cute. I like that, but yeah, I don't probably. End um, it. I know uh, Omni King is probably well, more just in, in terms of those titles. There, we have to give credit to Jake Herms. He is the one who coined Omni King, and everyone who's just taking it and gone with it as a- is absolutely. Um, yeah. Slap it on every wiki. Yeah, thank you for that, Jake. If, I appreciate it. If that. we're going to have King Kai and Supreme Kai for bad consistency, they kind of have to go with King Zen. Just like King not, Zen. Tra- <laughs> not translate half the title like they did for the others. So, uh, Well, they have gotten – I mean, obviously, we've, we've had changes since then. Things have been a little bit better. So may, maybe it will be a little bit more accurate by the time we get up to that point. Because oh, they do still go with like be. the full title for, for Beerus is like God of Destruction Beerus. Uh, you know, in like video games and things, so they do keep to that. So who knows? Maybe we'll maybe we'll have every king, Omni King, or King actually King Zen. I would if you you know what? No, just call Mike, him if King you end Zen. Up being right about just that. Just wait. I'm gonna. <laughs> Uh, well, I guess that's it. So, uh, so yeah, this is going up a couple days after the first episode of the Trump right. Star. So who cares anymore? Uh, Thanks. <laughs> yeah. So you, you're all moved on by this point, but. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this discussion, and uh, I, I guess you know we'll we'll be back in however long to you know talk about this again. Scott, I know you know because obviously you're a big. I've Trump got fan. things you're... to say. Also, you know what? Uh, I, I want to give special mention. I I didn't think that Mary would be basically back in the game by this point uh, with uh, the Temple of Trunks, uh, you know, returning again. Um, do you want to give any mention to her and like the Twitter and everything? And like, obviously she's back on the podcast again to talk about the arc. I guess so. Yeah. My wife, Mary, she started her website, uh, actually slightly before me. We both started in 98. She actually may, may have started in 97. Did she have a website? <laughs> you may have heard of it. It was one temple. Oh, drunks. Uh, yeah, she, yes. she doesn't want to like be super involved, but it's really exciting to have trunks back. So she's like, I'm going to take photos and I'm just going to you know, toss comments out there. And people really seem glad to uh, kind of have her back in the game a little bit there and tossing out her uh, old jaded perspectives as well. So, yep. And yet, and yet she is also adorably entertaining. So I, I'm very happy to see her back to doing stuff like that. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, I uh, married her, so she's got to have something going for her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you, I, I think I picked a good one. Oh my God, how many people have made the joke you <laughs> married her? Uh, I've <laughs> never heard that never, before, actually. Never, ever. in ex- all of No, no, I'm serious. I've never heard that. Oh my God. You, 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 <laughs> you married her? Wow. Wow. I'm, I'm, I always think that in my head whenever I'm hearing you guys in the podcast. So I, I, I guess I'm, I'm glad that I never went there. So good job, Scott. You're a piece of shit. Sorry. Um, I, I, I accept <laughs> Good job. You're a piece of shit. Wow. You're, you're a, a great friend, shit. Chris. <laughs> This is how we talk to each other. I and know. On that no, 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 hold extreme. on. Because I remember <laughs> one of the last times we were having this conversation, people were, were commenting down in the comments in Chris's video, like, you guys are really mean. Mike's really mean to Scott. Like, no, like, it's cool. We're all cool. Don't worry about it. No, this is this is our way of displaying affection is that we're awful people and we insult the shit out of each other. Why are you other. so mean to me, Mike? <laughs> is it because so I say uh, Saiyan? I'm sorry. M- Mike, you senpai. <laughs> Uh, I, I think, I think on, on that, uh, beautiful, warm hearted note, we're going to, we're going to wrap this up. So, uh, although, yeah, real quick, uh, Scott, obviously Twitter, team four star.com, all the usual stuff, right? Anything in particular you want to plug or anything? Oh, uh, yeah. It's team four star.com. Our channel is team four star. Follow me on Twitter. If you want at Kaiser Neko or team four star at team four star. Um, we also have a gaming channel. If you want to check that out, it's uh, TFS two Sands. So. And uh, also, we'll be seeing all of you guys, uh, or at least uh, you, Lanny, and Taka at Anime Expo on Fourth of July weekend. Uh, yeah. Uh, wait. You said all. Wait. Are Mike? Are you gonna be there? I'm not going anywhere. I'm. Okay. I'm oh, sitting no, right no, here. No, okay. No. no just. No. Odd, sorry. Yeah. No, no. Just the phrasing of that. Yeah. I will be at Anime Expo with Taka and Lanny. I'm only gonna be there Friday and like part of Saturday, but you know, I'll be there for a little. I get, I get to tuck Scott's butt finally after all these seven yes. years of not seeing him in person. Nothing. No, nothing wrong with a little casual butt touching between friends. A, a ca- ca- it's not casual, let's be honest here. Uh, Mike Konzenshu and the podcast, anything else per the usual? Is that is that all? Yeah, as, yeah. As normal? my butt yeah. will be over here alone <laughs> at Konzenshu. Cool. K-A-N-Z-E-N-S-H-U-U, that's the website. Uh, myself, Julian, Jake, and Heath, and uh, podcast, uh, Konzenshu. 
Kansenshu, Kansenshu, Vichito EX, that's me. Yes, do it all, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and me, I mean, the usual, you're, I mean, you're listening to this probably. If you're not listening to this on the, on the podcast itself, as Mike put it on the feed, you know what, you're listening to here, so you're already here, but whatever. Anyway, uh, in the comments, Barrow, share your thoughts about all of the new additions to the Dragon Ball universe, including the new universe as uh, and all of its inhabitants. What did you think of this arc overall? Were the things that you would have liked to see, in, you know, more? Uh, you know, what did it satisfy? Are you looking forward to, you know, the, the stuff upcoming? Any any theories you have about the trunk stuff? All the usual shit. Let us know your thoughts and hopes and dreams and aspirations. I've completely ganked that I from know. you, uh, Mike. Cool. By the way, so thank you. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so and I'll, honestly, if you have future Kerblot topics, uh, Dragon Ball related or otherwise, leave a comment about that too, or hit me up on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, blah blah blah. Go check out Dragon Ball Z Abridged on Team Four Stars, everything on, on their Every King. Uh, go listen to the Konzenshu podcast. They're doing more episodes about other general topics aside from just the latest news and uh, you know getting back to talking about all things. Dragon I Ball. talked about uh, music last episode. Yes, it was wonderful. They they went over Romantic Ageryo a lot, uh, and it was adorable. Oh, I need to uh, listen to that one. It's a good one. It's good. Uh, they do it still for years and years. It is, it has kept me company while I'm fucking animating and, and killing myself drawing shit. So thank you for that, Mike and everybody on the site. Uh, that's it. So that's it for Mike. That's it for Scott. That's it for me. I'm still ripping off Mike's entire state of being on a podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Bye.